In this video, I'm going to share some basic tips on how to be a top performer. For me, a top performer means that you hit all your metrics or all the metrics set by the client or by the company. And that also means eventually that you get the most of your earning potential. Because if you're a performer or a top performer, in your job then you will likely get performance bonuses or performance incentives especially in the call center industry now there are some agents who just want to do their job well hit the passing rate and that's it but there are also some agents who really want to soar high up there and want to get the most of their earning potential as i've mentioned earlier and i think that it really depends on what your goal is while you're working if you want to earn more, then you would want to really work harder so that you'll have more performance bonuses or more performance incentives. But if you just want to work, period, and that's it, then it's up to you. You just have to make sure that you hit all the metrics. Now, for this video, I'm going to focus on the basic tips on how to become a top performer regardless of the type of account or program that you're in. But remember that each account has their own criteria or own way of evaluating you as an agent or as a top performer. Well, you have to start with the basics, right? Step number one is to be present every single day. I know that I've already mentioned this in my previous video, but this is, I think, for me is the number one rule if you want to be a top performer because if you're not there if you're always absent then how will you become a performer how will you be able to do your job at the very least right especially in the call center industry where tardiness and absenteeism has or have a huge percentage rate then expect that for you to hit your goals and hit your metrics you have to go to work every day and avoid being tardy or being late and don't be absent, that's very simple. So you have to take your job seriously if you want to go up there and really hit all your metrics or your goals. And speaking of metrics, tip number two is to study your metrics if you want to be a top performer. Of course, don't just go out there working without a criteria for judging. Your client or your account will evaluate you based on a set of criteria or what we call the metrics. For example, you have customer satisfaction, you have probably conversion rates if you're in sales, you have quality or QA, you have SA or schedule adherence, you have AHT or average handle time, you have call resolution. There are so many metrics, but it depends on your client, whatever metrics they want to set for your account or for your program so you don't just make magic right there you have to know how to compute and how to study your metrics how do you exactly get your customer satisfaction rating how do you get a perfect score in your csat how do you get a perfect score in your QA how do you get a shorter handle time so that it adds up to your performance rate if you don't know how your metrics work if you don't know how to get your CSAT, QA, and all that thing, and all that stuff, then you won't be able to, to be aware of how to get there, how to be on top. Whereas if you know exactly how to hit the CSAT, so how to hit the CSAT, I have to make sure that I resolve the customer's concern, that I empathize, or whatever the uh, whatever the set criteria is for customer satisfaction so make sure that you're aware how to hit all your metrics don't be blind about it when i was starting as a call center agent i have to admit that i did not really know what csat is i was a newbie i did not know what qa was so i did not know and i did not have any idea how to compute everything so i was just really doing my job and when I hit the metric, I'm happy. When I don't, or when I did not, I did not even understand how it happened. So when I first started, it was like I was just doing my job for the sake of doing it. But I realized over time, and as I grew in the call center, I realized that I really have to study the metrics and I have to understand how they work. 
not because you want to trick the metric but because you want to hit them you want to hit your goal and be able to perform well if you don't know how the metrics work you have your supervisor your trainer your manager to tell you exactly how they work and to explain to you how to hit them so make sure you pay attention tip number three is to set your mind to it or claim it as I mentioned previously when I started I did not understand did not have any idea about my metrics so I did not really have a goal I just want to to work and that's it but if you want to be a top performer you have to set your mind to it and really say that I want to be a top performer and I will be because I know what to do and I want to study how to do this and if you have your mind set to that then you will be able to follow the different steps on how to achieve your goal as a top performer compared to someone who doesn't really have a goal at all. If your mind is just set to mediocrity or just average, then, well, there's no problem with that if that's really what you want. But if you really want to be a top performer, then prepare your mindset and do whatever it takes to be a top performer as long as you do not take advantage of other people. Tip number four is to start early. And when I say start early, you have to start early on at the beginning of the month because the calculation of your metrics or your performance rating will usually start at the beginning of the month. So for example, January 1, of course, obviously it is the beginning of the month, then you have to start hustling on January 1. Do not start hustling in the middle of the month because it's very, very difficult to bounce back if you have failed for the first few weeks of January and then decide to bounce back in the middle of the month. Although sometimes it does happen unintentionally because things happen even if we don't really want them to happen. So for example, if you're dead set to be a top performer for January, then even before January, you have to hustle. And come January 1, set your mind to it that you will be a top performer and do good as early as day one. As I've mentioned, again, it's hard to bounce back when you're already in the middle of the month. And what's worse is if you are already towards the end of the month, it's even much harder to bounce back. So if you want to be a top performer, start from day one and you have to work hard to maintain it until the end of the month and then the next month is another month which you also have to work on to be consistent as a top performer tip number five is be knowledgeable but for me this is just you know this is just a personal um suggestion i highly suggest that you work on being knowledgeable about your account and about whatever your client wants you to do because even if you're skilled you can't just work your way through the top by using what bad magic or ninja moves bad ninja moves or tricks you really have to be legit good with your uh client specifics or product specifics and how do you do that? You have to make sure that as early as training, you already study and practice. And you make sure that you listen to updates and you learn from each call that you get. Because uh, being a call center agent means that you are a subject matter expert, whether a customer service, you are a customer service specialist or a sales specialist, travel specialist, whatever type of customer service representative you are. I think the best part is for you to be knowledgeable because when you know it, you can always um, practice and be better with your skills. But if you don't know anything about the job, then it's really hard to be a top performer. You really have to know what you are doing. You really have to be knowledgeable. Tip number six is to value coaching and feedback. Not just when you're starting, but when you are, even though you're already uh, you've already stayed long in your company or in your account. When you are, uh, when you're taking calls or when you're already taking calls, sometimes you will be scheduled for off the phone time for coaching or for your feedback to give you ideas on how to improve your calls, what you did good and what you did bad during that call. 
Of course, you deserve to know so that you know how to improve in the future or for your next calls. So to be a top performer for me, you have to value that time given to you. Remember that every single second, every single minute in the call center is very, very important or very crucial. A lot of call centers are being paid by the number of calls that they get which is why you have most call centers have an average handle time metric which means that you are being measured on how efficient you are in taking calls because if it takes you too long to take a call then that means that you are not productive if it's unusually long or you, you are not efficient at all so when you have coaching or feedback time take that time and use it to listen to feedback, listen to your call, and learn from it. Don't just use your coaching and feedback to go to the pantry, chit chat. If it's not, if it's not intended for it, some because some some uh, supervisors or managers might plot a coaching or feedback schedule because they just want to speak with you. But if your coaching or feedback schedule is plotted. For you to talk about your call then maximize that time to to listen and to make sure that you have action steps taken for your next call so that you won't have to repeat the same mistake and i think that's very important because a lot of agents just take that for granted they don't want to listen and somehow they're scared to listen to their call but don't be because that's really one way for you to learn learn from your own call and be able to apply what you've learned to your next call and last but not the least tip number seven is to love your job so no matter how good you are even though you go to work every single day um, even if let's say you just go to work for the sake of it in order for you to be a top performer legit top performer for me you first have to love your job if you go to work every single day just dragging yourself out there just because you know for the sake of working and for the sake of not being absent it will be hard to perform it will be hard to do your best if everything in your head are just worries and negativities and you're not willing to go to work anymore because you don't love your job, then it is very hard to achieve your goal, which is to be a top performer. So I think it's very important to start loving your job first. And that's about it for today. Thank you so much for watching and for listening. I hope you've learned something from this video. If you haven't yet, please go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click the red subscribe button on YouTube down below. Or if you're watching this on Facebook, I will also link my YouTube channel as well. If you have any comments or topic suggestions, then please don't hesitate to comment them down and I will definitely consider those. Thank you so much again 